right. So today's guest is a very talented ukulele sister of mine, the ukulele goddess herself, Taimani. Oh, I like that introduction. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> I'm super stoked to be here on your podcast and nice to connect with you, even though we're a couple islands away. Yeah, I know. We, I don't, we don't get to hang too often. I think the last time was actually, um, what, Austria? Austria. <laughs> that was a fun one. It was. It was in the vibe vibe in Europe is just different like it is like in the US or even Hawaii but I just remember it was lots of fun and that venue was pretty killer yeah you had to climb all the stairs like mm -hmm. I'm like wow <laughs> yeah it was like a nice outdoor venue um they're really into their beer there so it's nice to be able to connect with you know like your Hawaii family while traveling so you get to like experience you know, food and, and different experiences, but also have that like ohana there at the same time. Definitely. And it's just so weird because I think I see you guys more like in other countries than I actually do back home. So we got to. So yeah. true. But that was, yeah, it was definitely yeah. lots of fun. And um, kind of leading into what I said, Ukulele Like Goddess is actually a new product of yours, correct? It is. It is. I have an Ukulele Goddess perfume. Um, uh, I really want to grab it really quick. Go but for, it's, it, go uh, for it. Okay, hold on. Here it is. This is the Ukulele Goddess. Um, it is a roll-on perfume. Um, during COVID, I've been actually working on my merchandise store because I've only had CDs for years, and like, who has you know a CD player these days? So this this whole year has been you know creating new merchandise. These are ukulele earrings. Um, oh yes, and those too. it's. Yeah, so I've been really busy, you know, t-shirts, even pillows. So wow. it's, yeah, <laughs> it's been really fun. I've been really uh, focusing on, on that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when you look at merch because, you know, we got the traditional, we got t-shirts, of course, and, um, you know, traditional stuff. So even like I was thinking out of the box too, so I don't know if I gave you one, but I actually made a USB bottle opener drive. What? <laughs> no, I haven't got one, but I want I gotta, one. I got to give you one. Yeah, it's like, it has, so it has like three CDs. It has like um, some tabs on it or something. But then on the other side is actually a bottle opener. You know? That's perfect. Oh, I, call it the, I call it the root beer bottle opener for all ages. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of yeah. this perfume, you coming out with a cologne? Um, you know, that is a really good question because I was trying to figure out what to name this actually and I felt like I should have done a unisex name because it's funny, a couple of my guy friends actually like wearing this, but I know it's ukulele goddess, but... That's okay, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I feel like everyone is a goddess in them. So um, it's kind of musky, actually, because it's woody. I wanted it to represent the ukulele. So there's definitely wood in there. And then there's a little bit of um, like uh, pikake in here. So there's like that floral scent. Okay. But for some reason, guys actually like to, to wear this as well. I just... When I was thinking of the name ukulele goddess was the first one. So I kind of just went with that. It's but cool. yeah. It's unique. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely, no, I'll, I'll support you. I'll pick one up, but I'll just say it's called <laughs> Ukulele God. There you go. The other, the other name was actually going to be Ukulele Demigod. Oh, okay. Which I okay. think would have been cool, but I couldn't really like make it look, I don't know. It just didn't fit. Like it didn't fit. In right. Place. It'd be like too long. Too long. Exactly. But it's, you know, the first of many merch products. What, what else do you have? What else do you have cooking up here? Like, you know? Um, I personally have been loving being at home uh, during this time. So I'm working on another album and I'm actually like home so I can, you know, record it, mix it, be in that whole vibe rather than like when you tour, you know, you're just like everything kind of stops when you're on, on the road because you're yeah. dealing with so much more. So, you know, things stop while, while you're gone. So when I'm, I'm, I'm able to be home, I can really just hone in on on projects that I've been wanting to do. Right, and yeah. that's what I felt like. I mean, you probably had a lot of stuff uh, this year. Yeah, yeah. My manager, he's kind of insane, but in a good way. <laughs> but there was, I was, I was going to be touring every other month. Wow. And that, that's, a, yeah, it's wow, a you, lot. It's a lot of... Mm -hmm. Got like a yeah. deep schedule. 
Yeah, yeah, it's funny because I would always, we would always play in the same places. So he'd either play like right before me or I'd play right before him. And it was just funny how like we would miss each other, but play in the same venues. And then, you know, we, we kind of have the same fans, you know, ukulele people. Right, so they'd always right. be like, I just saw Jake. <laughs> you guys should play together. <laughs> like, yeah. I know. Yeah. Ah, that's that sucks when you just miss each other like that. So I, I guess you were pretty devastated too. I think we all were to a point. And just, you know, you have so much stuff and you just lose them. So hopefully, I think, what, you, you got rescheduled for next year or? Um, I know that they're trying. I actually had a March tour scheduled <laughs> and then, you know, things started to cancel just because, you know, everything's still kind of up in the air. Right. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be touring in 2021. So I, I'm trying to plan out my year as if I'm not going to be touring just to be on the safe side. Right. And it's just like, I mean, I think that like we had several points where we're like, okay, we're going to be safe. I mean, even I was thinking, oh, January, but one, I mean, we don't know if it's it's going to be like semi-safe to travel alone. But for what we do, getting like m tons of people in a room at the same time, like that's like, we're probably mm -hmm. going to be like the last, unfortunately. So I think you're right. Yeah. And that's, it sucks, honestly, <laughs> because that's why, you know, that's what we love to do. And I just... I mean, I, for the first few months, like, I felt, like, really, really down. Like, oh, my gosh, like, mm -hmm. that's everything lost. So it took me a couple months to just kind of regroup and, okay, what else can I do? Like like you said, the merch thing, that's a, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I really feel like during these times, like when quarantine first started for everyone in March, I feel like everyone was just trying to, like, escape by either watching Netflix or, like, people really – we're able to get through that time. And I think music and art was a big helper in that way. And so I'm hoping people will realize that art and music is important for people's mental, mental health. So right. I, I think you're right. I think it's going to take, we'll be the last ones, but um, hopefully we'll be able, I hopefully people will be able to understand how important music is. Yeah, no, definitely. I think like you know, there's a lot of like Zoom events and people connecting through music, but it's just like yeah, the in person thing is just gonna be a little, a little on hold. But mm -hmm. you know, just just gotta push through, I guess. But it's it's, it's yeah crazy. No, it's crazy, and it's I just don't like just I've been telling everybody this, but I just did not knowing when. Like if it, anyone were to specify a specific date, it's like oh, okay, cool, good, I can make my i can mark my calendar right after that but it's just like yeah stay on time on until until they notify you know and that's the worst i think yeah how's maui about by the way um maui's pretty good for the most part i mean we still get tourists coming in but mm. cases seem to be okay isn't it pretty is it bad over there i know it was bad at a point yeah the i know the cases are kind of jumping up again um but regarding people going out and seeing each other, they're still doing that. Um, right. Everyone's wearing masks, though. Um, but I don't think personally it's affected me or, or my friends around me. But I know that the cases are, you know, jumping up. So, you know, Wahoo's always crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah Honolulu's it's always crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we just got to, I guess, be a little careful when we meet with friends and stuff. But... That's good. Yeah, I really want. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to come in January. I hope I'm able to. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, what are you doing in January? I I'm scheduled to go on high sessions. Oh nice. Yeah. So I I hope we get. I hope I can continue with that. Yeah. I miss all you guys. Like I get like seriously like I I fever kind. Like, oh yeah. Like, like no, there's no really ukulele players here in Maui to jam with, mm -hmm. and then I don't know. Just like I go crazy sometimes when I don't get to tour. Because I'm getting oh. to that, you know, like, oh, we get to go here and then there. I mean, you probably feel it too, to a degree, right? Like the thing stuff. Or is it, I like, mean, is it relaxing? Personally, I actually really love it. I think I had like PTSD from over touring. So like That's to be true. in like, yeah, to be in one place is, um, I'm really loving it. You know, performing is all about like being extroverted and like out. And then I feel like album creating an album and in the recording stu studios, like introverted. And I barely get to do that. So I'm just loving, you know, it's like a different energy of being home. I feel a little bit of rock fever, but I mean, Honolulu has a lot of 
you know, restaurants and, and new things that is, you know, that keeps me interested. But I, honestly, I'm a, I'm a homebody. I just stay home. I'll do yoga. I'll get my little matcha. And then, you know, I'll have a date night and we'll go to like a nice restaurant once a week. But nice. are, are you a Sagittarius? What are you? Oh, oh that's a good question. I mean, it's funny. I've, I've been talking about this with some friends, but I'm actually a Leo. Oh, Leo. Okay. Yeah. What okay. are you? I am an Aquarius. Oh, okay. So you, so you're really into like the astrological stuff, don't you? I think it's fun. You know, I'm not like super like this is exactly how it's going to be. But, you know, I like to be kind of tuned in with my environment and with the stars and just to, you know, have those extra feelers out. I think we can definitely get all the help that we can get. So definitely. I enjoy it. No, yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen the, um, I actually have the book right here. Do you, ever, do you have this book? It's the, the birthday book. Maybe you can read it. I do. You do? You have yes. this book. It's so accurate. <laughs> It is. They have the birthday book, and then they also have the relationships Relationship book. book. <laughs> I have both of them, and it is very, very accurate. And yes. I believe the birthday book is like astrology, but it's also numerology. And then I think there's like one other type of ology that they kind of like connect all together. Right. And it's just like, yeah, just like I look at all my friends' birthday, I'm like, oh, wow, you know, it's, like, it's pretty accurate. So... Yeah, yeah, like I, I kind of recently got into that a couple of years, and then de definitely more recently. So I, I don't know you're into that stuff too. So it's it's pretty mm -hmm. fascinating. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's it's fun, you know. I always, whenever I go out, I'm always like, "What's your birthday?" And they're like, "What? I don't why." Because I got I got <laughs> the cheat codes already, you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, with the next time we definitely gotta catch up with more about that stuff. It's so so interesting. But yeah, it is. You mentioned um, performing and. I know that's something you've been doing for a very long time. I remember I, when I was at about um, maybe like a seventh grader, I saw you on TV with Jake and um, Benny Chong. Wow, on TV? On TV. It was like some, some oh. special. And Jake had a spiky okay. hair with glasses. I, I yeah. don't know. You must have been like, what, like 10 years old? I think I remember what you were talking about. Yeah, I think I was around 10. It was like in a hotel and like all the ukulele players were there. Right. So is that like, yeah. is that like when you started? Like, was that the origins around that time? No. Um, no. Well, I started playing ukulele when I was five. And um, no, I actually started performing. I think I was my first. I did contests. So my first contest, I was five or six. But even before that, I was um, performing at like coffee shops or at malls. At such a young um, age? Yeah, wow. I just, yeah, my, my grandma's church. So I was never like scared or nervous. Um, and I kind of just, I loved performing. Before the ukulele, I was in like ballet and I just loved dancing. I loved being, you know, the center of attention. So <laughs> it's just, uh, I've, I've, I've always loved it. But I was with Roy Sakuma and his school, and they introduced you to play at hotels at a young age, and I had other um, teachers who would just bring me to coffee shops. So I, I've always been performing. Yeah, I know. I just remember in that video, you were, like, dancing all over the place. I was like, wow, that girl's a ham. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, some, I mean, that's, like, yeah. for a lot of people, that's something that's terrifying, you know. Like, even when I started, I mean, like, I could barely even talk into the microphone. <laughs> but it's yeah. definitely here. It's something I really enjoy. But for you, it just seems like it's just natural, like, on another level. Yeah, I, I, uh, I totally agree with you, though, because I also had problems mm. with talking. Like, once I took the ukulele away, like, if I had, like, a presentation at school, I would get so much anxiety. Wow, Probably really? what most people feel. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had great support, though. My dad and my mom were, like, very, like, just supported me. So I always felt very supported when I was performing. But talking to the audience can be really difficult. And I, I remember trying to, like, establish that connection like when I was 18 and I'm just like, I don't know how to talk to these people, <laughs> you know? It's two but, different skills, I think, you know? Yes. Because I know when you when you take command of the ukulele, it's just like, you know, it's limitless. But it's like when you get to the, the microphone, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's just another skill. Like for me, I feel like um, sometimes I'm better at the microphone than I am like on stage. Because especially when you're concentrating, right? It's hard to get into the music if you're worried about messing up at the same time. Yeah, I feel like sometimes your brain gets in your way, 
you know, when you're overthinking or if you're like, okay, this is a new song, like this is the part where I normally miss, have make a mistake, and then you're thinking about it so much, you make it that, that right. mistake. It's a self-doubt. Yeah. And it's, it's, just, it's just weird how that works because like for the longest time, I was always, um, I was always concerned the criticism of my dad. Because he'd, he'd mm. just be straight up after. He'd be like, okay, yeah, that wasn't good or something. So that, I, would, I would be afraid yeah. of that. So mm. like, there would be that, you know, that section of the song that's like hard, harder than the others. And I'd be like, oh, no, it's yeah. coming up. And just that mentality, it just you're going to mess up. So it's just going with like, a, you know, if I mess up, mm-hmm. then screw it. You know, it's okay. Yeah, you need that Leo energy, man. <laughs> yeah. Leos are like, my, you know, charming and love that spotlight as well and they you know they have that confidence but yeah i know i know what you i know what you mean my gosh august 11th you should check it out it's, it's so august accurate. 11th. <laughs> okay i will i will check that out oh my god but yeah sometimes i'll have like a glass of wine i mean that kind of helps loosen me up a little bit oh know? i i yeah yeah i think i think i had some wine before the austrian festival too yeah it, yeah it, it helps calms the nerves and then it's just yeah, it's just a different kind of energy, and yeah, I can relate. Yeah, yeah, it's a social lubricant, right? It's liquid courage. It's right, there, courage, you know. Right. Just not too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly, not too much. It's like a science, yeah. Right, right. And and every audience is different, too, you know? So you're talking always has to, like, correlate with a new show, a new energy. Right. So. Actually, this is a great topic to talk about but performing because it's something that I, that's my passion is performing. I'm secondary, like a teacher, but I love, yeah. Like, like even you knew it. Like I, I love being in front of the crowd. I love sharing my music and stuff like that. But the crowds, it's what makes it interesting because you have to really adapt and adjust because the energy, energy, that's why I'm having, you know, I'm actually having a super hard time with live streams. Mm-hmm. Oh because, yeah. Just because you say, like, I remember my, my dad keeps saying, okay, keep it going, keep it going. I'm just, I'm so used to the energy being thrown back at me. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. when you're in front of these just lights and the, um, the camera and then you end a song, it's like, <clears throat> thanks. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know. Yeah. And even like Zoom performances now too. You get that too. Yeah. And it's right? just like, it's just, it's just interesting. <laughs> it's so different. But like, so yeah. like, where's been a place you've been to that had like, I guess, the best energy or from the crowd that you could think of? Um, so I played at this place in Chinatown in Hawaii, and it's called On King Art Center. It's actually where I met my partner oh, of nice. 10 years now. It's been a long time. Um, but it was intimate. It wasn't like a huge crowd. It wasn't outdoors. It was just like this underground open mic art gallery and the energy there was just so supportive and special you know it for some reason I couldn't sleep after that that night I was just so ecstatic from the energy that I received from those people and you know for me that place was uh, a way for me to rekindle myself as an artist because I think I was like 18 college time and I was kind of like getting burned out because I was just doing Waikiki gigs same surf medley over and over and over every single mm-hmm. night and you know as an artist you kind of it takes your soul so when i found that place in chinatown you know they were no covers all originals collaborating with other musicians poets dancers so it kind of was a place for me to find myself as an artist so for me that was like the best energy i received oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's inter- yeah, it's just it's it's just so cool. Just you know, at certain places you go to and all that. But yeah, I, I think I remember seeing some videos of you like when you two first started like playing the surf melody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang. Oh. It's but, a it's a good one. It's a good one, but I don't know if I could do that. Just just that. Yeah, yeah. that's the, yeah. Especially like when you're not, you can't freely express the music you want to. Because certain you know certain things like oh. Yeah, I'm down, but other days it's like, you know, I want to play something something new or something, you know, just to switch it up. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. It exciting. Yeah, Waikiki is great, but it's like Vegas, you know? People, tourists are there to see the Luau show. That's it. That's what they want. They're not quite into what else does Hawaii have to offer, or at, the, at least the time that I was there. And it's great. I love it. Um, it's sustainable income for me. But as an artist, 
you know, like, like you said, when we go to Europe, that artist, that audience is all about originals. So I, I, I went to France once and they were like, that's great play covers, but I want to know you as an artist. What are you about? You know? And so whenever I go to Europe, I love that the audience is like completely opposite than America and Americans love covers, which is great, but you need that balance. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a little bit of both because it's like something that they can relate to. Mm-hmm. You kind of got to use the covers first and they're like, oh, mm-hmm. that's it. Get the interest right, and then it can showcase your originals. But yeah, exactly. I, I actually didn't even know that. I mean, I guess that might be like a, a France thing, but I mean, because have you ever been to like Ireland? Um, no, not yet. It, you gotta How go. Was it? Like, like it, I'll tell them. I'll tell them about you. But no, it, it's mm-hmm. just it was this. So we were there for a couple of days, and there's a small little pub in Dublin. Ooh. And um, really nice people I did like a workshop and then they have this thing called Ukulele Tuesday. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's such a small place, but they fit like over a hundred people in this small room. And then like we we're getting to play and then they just like, oh, have your first Guinness. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, so, and, and I tell you this, the Guinness up there is so different from here. By the time the thing flies from all the way across the world, it's kind of like a little bitter and stuff, but... Mm. Oh, the thing is just it just like it's so it's rich it's creamy it's like it's and it goes down so easily up there it's like on a different level Ooh. we must get yeah we must get like grade c stuff and they hit they're all grade a up there we even went to the um the guinness factory which was pretty oh cool, cool. yeah i gotta send you this picture you can actually put your photo on top of the beer foam really oh yeah and it's super yeah, yeah, yeah. accurate it, it's kind of like coffee Right, you know, like right. lattes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because it lasts until you get all the way to the bottom, which is <laughs> weird. So it was it was definitely an experience. But going back to the pub, I just remember the energy from that. The energy from that crowd is something because I don't know if it's just they're laid back and just like you know let's have a good time. It was unreal. That small little room, like. I felt I've never felt energy like that, like throughout the entire like Europe tour. I mean, there's been places where it's been good, but they're just like it's just different over there. Wow! Yeah, I would love to try the drinks in Ireland. I hear it's beautiful <laughs> there. Um, have you tried Prague's beer? Oh, I was gonna. I was actually gonna go there this year, actually. Oh but yeah. But then yeah, so I don't know. Hopefully next time. No, how is that? Oh my gosh, the beer is amazing. I'm not much of a beer person, but you know, you got to go where people drink beer. So I loved it. Prague is beautiful too. You'll love it. It's such a beautiful city. It's old and like gothic a little bit, but the beer there was, I don't know, it probably, it's probably different from Ireland, but I mean, Europe, Europe has awesome beer and, and uh, wine. German Germans have awesome wine. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I was I was actually gonna go to Germany too. Like, oh, I'm so bummed. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. yeah, it's just like it's just a different style. But I'm I'm really really open minded to trying new things, and I appreciate you know the countries, mm-hmm. uh, their food, the beer, and all that. So it's yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back on the road even more now. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 no. And, <laughs> another thing though is the audience because they they like want to share their their country with you, and that's what I love because you know sometimes when you're like a tourist and you like go somewhere new, you don't know if you're getting like the authentic place, right? Yeah. So it's nice to be able to talk to the people after the show because they're like, okay, you have to go here, you have to go here, and you know you're getting like the real good stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's not just like googling it. They like they know. Same thing, yeah, same exactly. thing in Ireland. They're like, oh, you got to go to the, there's like, it's the, was it the cliffs or something? Yeah, I can't, don't quote me on that. But yeah, but the next day we went, it was kind of like on the coastal mm-hmm. area, but just, yeah, the view, it's just like, I mean, come on, we, we, we grew up in like Hawaii, right? With mm-hmm. small islands. And when you get to the other side of the world, you realize, wow, this world is just huge. And there's so mm-hmm. much we haven't seen. So it's such mm-hmm. an enlightening experience. And yeah, that's cool, you know? Yeah. And not a lot yeah. of people can say that. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. It'll be back, I'm sure. Give it a couple years. Months. Oh, we'll yeah. see. I know. I know Craig. I was talking to Craig and he's like, 
He goes, yeah, uh, plan until 2022, like until the, and I'm like, dude, like I'm, I'm going to be 30 by the time I, we can finally travel again. <laughs> oh, you're a baby. You're a baby. So you're 28, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I just turned 28 nice. in, in, uh, in August. So yeah. So I had it all. You better get ready for your Saturn's return. Have you heard of Saturn's return? Saturn's return. That's. In astrology, look it up. It's uh, from 28 to like 30, 31. It's a very pivotal point in everyone's life where something happens where you change, whether you get married, you quit your job and move somewhere, a person in your family dies. It's just a very like heavy time. So, uh oh, is that luck. bad news? <laughs> 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 it's just a, a time where you completely change. Uh, but it could be a good thing, right? Changes. Eh. Oh no, you're making me nervous. To look. <laughs> <laughs> you should just get your like. You should get your chart read. Um, okay. Okay. If you haven't yet, it'd be, it'd be good. Oh, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of like, you have like a lot of songs with the you know like the planets and like you have was that Mother Earth is a song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the one with the chanting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a really cool piece, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah, when did you this start to when did you start to do this this like planet story song? Um So idea? yeah, that first um let's see. That was the first album I kind of did on my own as an independent artist. So the album I did before was with Mountain Apple, Ukulele Dance. Loved working with them, loved it. I felt like I learned a lot and I kind of just wanted to do my own thing. I'm, I'm an Aquarius, like very independent, just want to do the way I want it to. So I decided to make my next album on my own. And um, I like the planets one because I've always been interested in them. Like every science project was about the planets uh, in elementary school and high school so always have had a passion for them but it's also a subject that everyone can relate to and appreciate um, which I think is important um, and I don't know it was uh, it was like my first album as an artist to try and express myself um, and I kind of just personified each planet like what would they be as a greek god you know and that was part of my influence was greek greek gods that's so unique. you know like no one does that yeah <laughs> that's so that's pretty cool yeah. and, now, and and as recently like as i got into all this like astrology stuff it's like it's mm -hmm. not just planets you know like <laughs> because you know when yeah. you grow up you just like okay the solar system you got your planets but after understanding like the you know the, yeah like neptune and all that i was mm -hmm. like gotcha <laughs> Yeah, well, it led, it led me to my next album, Elemental, which was all about the elements. So earth, wind, fire, water, ether, each astro astrological sign has an element also as well. So Leo is very fiery, fire. So, you know, just kind of like correlated into the element um, album too, just so, so nicely. Aquarius is all about air ideas, thinking weird. We're just kind of like eccentric. We're kind of like weird people, but it's cool it works for me <laughs> it works i don't i don't mind it yeah oh okay so. oh that's it i got i gotta look up your birthday too now <laughs> yeah february 13th february 13th i'll, I'll february check it 13th. out for sure cool <laughs> oh wow and yeah. um oh so that's the story behind the plan do you have a theme for the new album or is it just yes i do um it's called well at the moment it's called Hawaii. Um, and this album is more of a story. Like the last two albums had a concept. So like this is earth, this is wind, this is, you know, fire, this is the planet. This one is more of a story about a girl trying to find her mana or trying to find her inner strength. Um, but it takes, uh, it's a story where she almost drowns and then she is on this island called Hawaii, which is where Polynesian mythical gods and goddesses live on. And she, it's, yeah, she's just trying to find her inner mana. And uh, so that's kind of a, a cool thing. So there's a lot of Polynesian inspirations in this new album, which I'm really excited to share. That, I think that's so cool that you're able to like weave your passions into your music like that. 
Because, like, when I think of when I put a CD, I just, like, put a random selection of <laughs> covers and, and uh, mm-hmm. originals. But I think that's just interesting that they're all, they're all themed around, you know, yeah, what you believe in and your, um, your passions. I think that's really cool. It's very different. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. It just kind of happened. I think it stemmed from me creating shows. Um, and so I look at my album as like a show. If this were a 45 minute show, how would it flow? And so this mm-hmm. is kind of like the soundtrack behind there. And I don't know, it just kind of uh, worked out that way. That's yeah. cool. What kind of stuff have you been adding to your shows? Um, well, I've been adding lots and lots of dancers, aerialists, Um, poetry you know that's kind of stemming from that on king experience the bohemian collaborations um even now my merchandise like this is a a local maker from here in hawaii and i just like collaborating with other artists and in many different aspects you know also this person is from hawaii as well that you know she creates since skincare and a bunch of different things so um I don't know. I want it to be an experience. When someone comes to my show, I want it to be visual, also audio. I mean, if I could do smells, that would be so cool as well. You know, so people can smell. I know. I'm a huge Disney fan, so I think it also comes from going to Disneyland, watching Cirque du Soleil Soleil shows. Right. You know, it's like a full experience that you're in you got you know what you gotta do you gotta add you know they get that 3d effect like they have a universal oh. studios <laughs> that yeah, was the next virtual. level <laughs> virtual reality oh, wow that's the, right yeah that, that's just next level stuff but if you can make it work that'd be that's pretty cool <laughs> true that would be kind of cool oh wow so that's 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 very unique and i do have to ask because you actually know the man himself 007 is that correct oh yeah, uh, one of them, yes. Well, that, I, I mean, I that's met, that's um, the James Bond that I grew up with. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I think he's the most suavest and the most charming. But I think we're a little biased. But he's my favorite. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 yeah. I remember, You're, like, uh, I, I think I seen a picture or something, and I was like, "Whoa, that's just too cool." <laughs> Pierce Brosnan, yeah. Um, funny how that all happened. So I played a gig on Kauai. And it was like a hippie, homegrown festival, really fun. And then this lady comes up to me and she's like, oh, you know, I work with Keely Brosnan. I didn't know who that was at the time. That's Pierce Brosnan's wife. And she's like, yeah, like she'd like to use your music in her documentary. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then I got an email saying like, we'd like to use your music in our documentary. It's about GMOs and the effect of that. She's very like all about non-GMOs, GMOs, and how it's affecting the Hawaiian islands. And so I was like, sure, use it. And then I guess it was showing at HIF on Oahu and she invited me. She's like, hey, you know, it's, you want to see your music in our, in our documentary. It's being shown at this movie theater. I'm like, okay, so I go. And then like Pierce Brosnan's right there. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> that's 007 right there. Wow. And um, yeah, and then she's like, we're going to the HIF festival. And it was crazy. Cause I was like, oh darn, I have like a gig already. I, I think I had like two gigs that night. I'm like, I can't. And Mark, my manager, is like, you have to do it. You have to make it work. And I'm so glad, you know, I just had to go from one to one. And then I just showed up at HIF and I'm like, hey, can I play for free? And they're like, okay. Wow. <laughs> like, sure. Oh, wow. So I, I played there and Pierce and Keely saw it and they're like, oh my God, we love what you do. Let's, um, let's hang out. So I got to hang out with them and um, very, very sweet and very authentic you know wow family. that's did you play the 007 theme song in front of him of course <laughs> <laughs> i had to oh my gosh and, that's uh, crazy <laughs> yeah yeah very very sweet and very sweet for him to just be like okay sure <laughs> wow. and um yeah very nice people yeah oh, i think uh playing like a theme song in front of someone that you admire that's like i think i'd be incredibly nervous <laughs> oh yeah I yeah mean, i mean it's just like i remember playing like jake's song in front of him because oh, yeah. he know. i mean the, he's like the creator yeah. of this stuff so like you're just like oh my gosh if he messes up like he knows but like 
So it's kind of like in that same realm. Mm. It's like if I were to play the Game of Thrones theme in front of like Tyrion. Oh man. Or something. <laughs> It would totally be different, though, because I don't think it's ever been on, done on ukulele, or they probably haven't heard it on ukulele, so that, you know, if you make a mistake, you're like, oh, it's just, like, the way that I want it to sound on the ukulele. That's you a know, good way like, to put it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, yeah. it's how you roll with it, you know? Exactly. It would be kind of cool to play in front of Tyrion, though. I, I'm also a fan of Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. would be, that'd be pretty interesting. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, what do you have any like future, I guess, endeavors or like a big vision you have like coming up? I mean, mm. beyond the album? And Yeah. Well, before COVID happened, I was all about like tour as much as possible, get myself out onto the mainland as much as possible. I really want to like go for it. And then COVID happened, and of course, everything kind of went to a standstill. So it's really provided me a space to figure out what I want, not from an ego place, but more of like, okay, there are other things that are more important in this life, family, health. Um, And so I kind of want to do passive income. Mm. That's kind of like my new thing, which I'm really, merch store is all about passive income. So you know, I love performing, but I don't want to have to rely on it. And then I get injured. And then what am I going to do? So I really want to set up a passive income for me. So I'm able to perform more as fun. And I love it. I know it's it's a very special gift that I, I have. But I want to be able to, you know, I want this to last, you know, my right. plane to last. Yeah, and that's so. funny because that's actually like, that's something I'm working on too. Passive yeah. income. That's I mean, it's hard to be. It's hard to do what we do. You know, mm-hmm. it's very yes. hard to be to succeed in this in this business. So like that's what I'm. I'm actually like yeah, I'm working on an online academy actually. Oh, cool! That's a release next year. It's a lot of work. <laughs> My gosh, I mean, yeah. in front of the computer and the tech stuff, I'm not really. I'm good at the, like maybe creating the content itself, but mm-hmm. I don't even know when it's going to be released because there's so much more work to do. But I guess that'd be my mm-hmm. version of the, you know. Totally. It's always, it's a lot of work up front. I know what you mean. Like a merch store is all about like up front, you're working night and day. And then like once it's released, you can kind of like sit back and, okay, well, what do I want to do now? But I know what you mean. And right. yeah, the technology part is another like thing to, add it's another like challenge to learn about in this it world is. it is and it's just like i wish i had like a like a team you know but i feel like it's like yeah i mean my dad had, like he was kind of into photography so he shot all the videos we changed up the living room background and stuff like that but it's just like nice now what <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm like i had to learn kind of to semi-edit that was already stressful oh. and then now it's just like putting it onto the website mm-hmm. and the way it's showcased because it's like that's everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like marketing, promotion. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's it's kind of a headache, but I know it's gonna pay off. Though. I okay. know what you mean. Like we work on this album, like we're mixing, recording, like mastering, and then finally you have the product, and then you're like, oh no, like now the real work begins because now you have to promote it. Now you have to go on all of the radio and TV. It's just starting. Yeah. Right. I mean. It's just one part, and then like marketing is like, oh no, there's like another, another thing. No, yeah. I think I'm just about hire a team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, right? If I if I, if I could, I totally would. But you're very lucky to have a dad that can like do photography. Because my boyfriend, as much as I love him, he is he is not the best when it comes to like taking photos or video. You know, like. Well, you better hope he doesn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I, yeah, I know. I he's so sweet and he just wants to help. But like some people have the eye, you know. Some right. people have the photography eye, and then you know some people don't. And it's just, I'm, it's yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, I don't want to take too much of your time. But I'd like to thank you for. Oh. Um, I'd like to thank you for donating your time. I know you're like super super busy, but thanks again, Taimani. No worries. I'm here. You know, I'm here at home. So, you know, it's nice to be able to like connect within your community because like you said, we were just, we were just connecting when we were gone and just doing our own thing. So it's nice to be able to like chill out and like have a conversation with you and not have to worry too much about, you know, 
other yeah. things. So no, no, thanks definitely. for having me. Of course. And, you know, check out Tamani's merch. She got some killer merch and probably more to come. So check out her store. It's uh, really awesome. I definitely got to I gotta, I gotta pick up that, that cologne, not the perfume. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are an ukulele goddess slash demigod. So, yes, give it a try. We'll it's on my website. Good. Yep. Sounds cool. good. Sounds good. But thanks again. And I'll, yeah, hopefully we'll see each other soon. Will do. Thank you. Yeah.